Well, welcome back to Gold Derby. I'm Christopher Rosen. I'm joined by Jane Krakowski, uh, who plays Mrs. Dickinson, Emily Dickinson's mother, on the show Dickinson, the Apple TV Plus show. Jane is a five-time Emmy nominee, and I want to start talking about, like, you know, when you first took this role of Emily Dickinson's mother, I guess, you know, now you're through two seasons and, and you're into season three, you're making season three now. What, I guess what has surprised you most about this role uh, for you that maybe you didn't expect when you first took it? Oh, what an interesting first question. Uh, what has surprised me? I think, I don't know if it surprised me, but I'm pleased with the growth that all the characters have had. Um, this show is so completely out of the mind of Elena Smith. And I think when it first started, I was just most excited about its acronistic style, that it was going to be so deliberately acronistic. I love music. I was so into like that we were going to do, you know, fetch, fetch water and milk cows to like rap music. <laughs> she was going to write poetry to that rap music. And so I was... I was drawn to that, to that element of it. And I guess what I think is lovely is the jumps, uh, leaps, jumps, the characters have made in between each season. Um, and because I think sometimes when you sign on for a character, the character s tends to stay, the core beliefs stay the same and they have in this too, but you kind of almost by the third season of a show, you could predict what your character would say or what the reactions would be or what the storyline would be for that character that year. What has been completely surprising is that Elena comes in and says the world changed, people change. And then season two was so absolutely different tonally, I think. Uh, and each character was grew quite a bit from season one. And initially that was a bit like, oh, wait, can you explain to us, Elena, like why they made these steps? Like why we have even certain beliefs about what we think our children should do or, and she just, she had answers for every bit of it and guided our characters where they were going to start season two. And then I think actually season two is, is better than season one because of it. Um, and I think we all eased into the tone of the show and what it would be because shows, shows change. I love, one of my favorite things is to go back and see like the pilots of shows because they are not what the show is by the time the show reaches its stride. Um, and that has been true to the shows I've been on and, and, and other ones that I like to go back and, and revisit. Yeah, that's hilarious. I agree. I, anytime we've been rewatching stuff during uh, the last year or so, you get the pilot is almost always like a lot different. And it's like wonderful to see how the characters evolve. I feel like, you know, with Emily's mom, Mrs. Dickinson, I, I, I love this season for your character and you. I, I thought like, obviously, like a big theme of the season was uh, fame and like, you know, obviously like the invisibility that Emily maybe feels uh, as like, you know, like people are talking about her, but she's not like a, the agency that she maybe doesn't have around that fame. And I felt like for Ms. Dickinson, you get that, there's a real, I think it's episode four, you have that really great, uh, you know, arc with, with Edward, your husband, uh, and, and talking about like partner intimacy and all these different things. And I thought that was really wonderful. And I like the way the show doesn't like play that for a joke. And I guess, can you talk a little about like getting to play that arc and stuff? I thought those scenes are really great. Like when you guys are in the hole and stuff, I just yeah, really yeah. like that episode. And I think for your character, like you said, like, I thought it was like, a lot of fun to see like you know unexpected things for characters I guess like I guess for you as an actress like what was that like so when a season starts we tend to have a like a week-long rehearsal process period where we come in we do all of our fittings we talk with Elena we hear what sort of her thoughts are for the character and the growth of the character um, and then we go over individual scenes and initially I'm glad that you brought up that scene in the hole because initially that scene was just a joke it was the physical joke of us getting in this hole of Edward obviously getting in this hole and then Mrs. D joining joining him. And that's where the scene ended. And I kept saying, but she's saying, I have something to tell you. I need to ask you something over and over. That obviously seems important, but then we never got to what the question was. And so I had, I, I sat down with Elena and I said, what does she really want to ask? And I think this is what she wants to ask and what she want, is feeling. And can we film it? Can we, can we ask those questions? Can we do it? And she then wrote me one of, I think, the best scenes that uh, Mrs. D has had. So up to that point. And I thought it, it opened the character entirely. I think the character became much more fully rounded, became a, a, hu a human with deep emotions, uh, fears, insecurities, um, vulnerability, a lot of stuff that we didn't get to see in, in, 
in a uh, series one in in the first um, season, and in in season one, I think we had to absolutely establish the patriarchy, the traditionalism, so we could know that Emily is going the other way and it's going to be a different kind of show, which I get. But it was so nice that I felt Mrs. D kind of joined the rest of the gang in the device of the show. And also we got to know her better and her vulnerabilities. So then we could care for her more and not just want her as a joke to, to you know, come in every once in a while and dust with a with a bit of humor. Um, I think we actually then started to learn to care about her. And there was another scene in season two that I was again so thankful for, which was um, a scene where they go to a spa with Emily, where they initially, it's quite a jokey scene where we are tied to a bed that's supposed to be some sort of therapy. It's either, it's either uh, a health regime or abuse or torture, not sure which one, um, which is kind of the humor of that whole episode that that's what spas were then. Um, and obviously ultimately that an orgasm is the greatest release a woman can have and then she's fine. Um, <laughs> so great and the humor is awesome and the location and the, the design team did one of the most amazing jobs I'd seen. Um, it was just, Everything was so beautiful and gorgeous and, and funny and accurate and all of that, the whole package. Um, but when Mrs. Dickinson realizes in this cocoon contraptment that her daughter actually needs her to be a mom and is in pain and needs to be comforted and taught what love is and that it's okay to love who you love and don't go with somebody that you don't love was such a big message because Mrs. Dickinson in all of season one didn't believe in that. She wanted her to follow the traditional rules. And I think Mrs. Dickinson became a more modern woman in that moment. And I was so happy for the character that she got to be a good mother to her daughter instead of being a, a foe or trying to make her go into the confines that the daughter doesn't want to go into. And it actually touched me a lot because as being a mom of a 10 year old, you've got to let your child be who they are. And it, to me was such a beautiful moment to realize that I, I hope every parent loves their child for whoever they are and whatever beliefs you have to just go with who your kid is. Um, and that, so that it touched me personally as well as um, I think the message was beautiful for the story and for the character. Yeah, I think that's one of the things I, I mean, like I really like about the show is I think that, you know, for obviously for young women, I think they're, it's definitely going to speak to them and certainly like millennials and even younger, like Zoomers or whatever, whatever generation is. But then I think for like parents and like older people as well, like myself, I'm like, oh, I get different things out of it too. And I just, I really enjoy that. And I think that, like you said, like I think Elena really, I think there's a lot of empathy for all the characters, which I find really nice. And I, again, like you said, like not going always for the easy joke or always for the punchline, I think is, is really fun. Can you talk a little about like you get like, Obviously, your character, you're also very funny on the show, obviously, because you are a very funny performer. Uh, can you talk a little about like balancing the tone of the show? Because obviously, like you said, like it is, there are some dramatic elements, but it also is a comedy. And I guess like getting to, you know, like how you guys tweak that throughout to make sure the tone is right. Because I think it, it does seem like it would be tricky, I think, from a, from a performer standpoint. But I guess I'd love to hear from you. Yeah. And it's, it's also a very different type of comedy for me. Um, I had obviously, I think you know, but I've been lucky enough to work in the Tina Fey, Robert Carlock world where it, it's the greatest gift to a comedic actor because it's joke after joke after joke. And there is just as much pleasure in setting up the next person's joke or be the straight man to the, that joke as to them setting you up and you getting to deliver the punchline. Um, and there are so many per page that it's just a gift of comedy. Um, and so it's a very, this was a very different show tonally and there are not jokes per se. A lot of the humor, which I find intellectual actually, is um, in the time period. So like you have to find a lot of the times where the joke is or where the humor is that you can then celebrate um, and let blossom. And I, I'm going to admit, I feel like I missed a whole bunch. And I now, I feel like in season three, I really understood how to hone Mrs. D's sense of humor 
particularly, but also fully inhabit the sense of humor of the show. I think there's very clear moments in season one where that is there, and there are very clear moments in season two where that humor is is there on the page and it's written and you know where to live in the joke. But I think there's also other moments that I love to find as an actor that I'm like, oh, I'm sorry, I missed that one now. Now I get like the humor of some of the, some of the moments I may have missed and I'm now thrilled that I am fully living in the world where I get to find even more of them. So you mentioned season three. I know you're, you guys are finishing up soon, I guess, at, without spoilers or anything like, I mean, what, what has been exciting for you about, uh, you know, season three so far, uh, you know, and like, like, what could you tease, I guess, about it without like giving anything away? Oh my gosh, there's so much goodness <laughs> in season three. And the greatest goodness of season three is that we got to film it. Um, we are obviously filming under the pan the pandemic guidelines. And I realized when we got back to set and was obviously working on the dialogue and memorizing the lines and playing the part. But when we got on set and we saw the 200 to 300 crew members getting their tests at least three times a week, wearing masks for 13 to 15 hours a day of shooting, it's the collaboration of the whole group that makes the thing happen. And it really just, to me, season three felt like a celebration of that. Everybody coming together because they love doing what they do and we all will take whatever measures it takes to make the show happen. And I think that was definitely uh, the beauty of season three. And, you know, seeing our camera crew and our, you know, when they laugh at something, you're like, oh, thank gosh, I'm so glad you're here. I'm so glad there's somebody to receive the material for us and what what we love to do like nothing makes me happier than making someone laugh so um the this, this season is definitely a celebration of all that the season goes back really to the family which may have been partly pandemic um but the civil war is happening which is one full half of the season and um the home life of the family coming together and and where they grow starting season three because there's a whole big jump where we start season three again which i think elena did from season one to season two and she does it again in season three and i just think what that does is open up so many different character traits and uh parts of our of our person that we can we can play within the characters Mrs. D starts out really dark and then ultimately ends up um, in such a wonderfully comic place with moments that are, um, I think, just as heartfelt as, as, as the whole or the spa as well, which I, I really love that she's given me that kind of writing. In, in some of the prior shows I've been on, there's not really the room for that. It's not those kinds of shows where there is a... Um, a variance in the light and the dark and the depth of the character. And that's something I celebrate in this particular project that you get to, you get to fly with all those different styles. I'm yeah. still trying to get in one of those cool, sexy dance numbers though. That's, I just really want to like tweet with integrity on this show. <laughs> I mean, I was going to say like, you obviously you're also, you know, in addition to being an Emmy nominee, you're a Tony winner. I said tweet and a twerk, twerk with twerk. integrity. Uh, yeah, no, I knew, I knew what you meant though. I think I said tweet by accident. You did, you did, that's fine. Uh, I but said twerk with integrity, that's why I'm not gonna get it. This is Dickinson doesn't even know what it is. I bet twerk <laughs> with full Dickinson corset integrity. <laughs> well, I want, you know, like obviously you have a musical background, you're a Tony winner, uh, you know, a, a Haley's a singer. I would love it. Is there any chance that we do a, a Dickinson musical episode? I feel like would be uh, so wonderful, but I don't know if that's- Everybody on our show has got a musical background. Yeah. Yes. Of some sort. I mean, Ella is making an album. Adrian tra travels with a band. Uh, Toby <laughs> has the Christmas musical show he puts on every year. Like, I mean, literally we are the, we are the team that's screaming for it. We, um, we do do a more musical episode, but it is not like a musical episode. There's okay. more singing in it, which is a teaser. Um, and one of the most fun ones to film because it was a bit like a show and tell day, which is always fun. Right. Um, and then, yeah, no, and then go public domain songs that <laughs> <laughs> were not only affordable, uh, but fit the time period of the show. It's <laughs> awesome. And I guess before, before we go, I was speaking of Broadway, I know you were a headliner at the Roundabout Gala uh, this week, I guess, like, I mean, it seems like, you know, obviously we're coming out of the pandemic, Broadway is making a return, I guess, you know, like, are, what are your hopes and dreams for the next year of Broadway, I guess, and how it looks? And because I, I feel like you're obviously such a great Broadway performer as well. Well, I, I just felt like a bit, um, 
I don't know. I felt like Monday night was such a celebration to me. I had such a ball going back to my roots and performing live, getting getting to rehearse again with Warren Carlyle, like got me in a rehearsal room to choreograph the first two numbers. It was sort of the She Loves Me team got back together. The whole design team designed the evening and Warren Carlyle who choreographed She Loves Me helped me with the first two numbers and Scott Ellis directed the evening. And it just sort of, um, it was out in Central Park with the New York Pops. It was a, a wonderful first live performance uh, first gala, I, I was told, first sort of fundraising gala in person um, since the whole pandemic hit. I, I felt it was a gift to be, that they asked me. And I was very nervous initially before I started rehearsal. But then once we got in the room with all these people that just have so much love for the art form and for what we were doing, I ended up not being nervous at all. And just, it felt like a celebration of what I love to do. So I felt really lucky about that. And the audience was receiving it that way too, which is so lovely they're all they're all theater um, enthusiasts and theater supporters so it was a great night i'm thrilled about september 14th and hopefully i can get in to see bruce springsteen in july jersey girl um <laughs> but i i'm curious too i mean are we wearing masks in the theater i think they have to open at full capacity because Otherwise they can't make the nut to make it happen. Mm -hmm. I can't wait for all the crews to get back in the theaters. I can't wait for the hot dog guy to sell his hot dogs. Um, you know, I really, it's part of my New York blood, those streets of the Broadway area and the community. And I just want everyone to get back in business again. I should have done that song back in business for me, Tracy. <laughs> it would have felt like what, what I'm encouraging everybody to do, but, um, you know, on September 14th, I want to be there. I, I'm fully vaccinated. I, if we have to be vaccinated, that's great too. I'll be there in the theater. Um, I just hope people come. I hope New Yorkers and the tri-state area, if they're the first, just come on back and see every show they can. Um, and if tourists are back by then, which I feel like they might be, um, I hope they will feel safe and come back to the theater too. It's such a big part of the lifeblood of New York City, so, um, and the industry. So I hope that uh, everybody comes back and supports it. And I'm, I'm definitely gonna be there at least on the 14th and, and hopefully a, a week in July, at least one night in July for Bruce too. Yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> I'll, I'm trying to get the Bruce ticket too, but I, I'm, not, I'm not gonna hold my breath on my end. But uh, Jane Krakowski, uh, Apple, uh, Dickinson season two is on Apple TV plus right now. She plays Mrs. Dickinson on the show. Great job. Thank you so much. And I appreciate Thank you for talking with me. Thank you. Bye.